Welcome again to Lakeshore Focus, a weekly show highlighting the key issues, important events, and interesting people in our region. I'm Keith Kirkpatrick. This week's show definitely has an interesting person. We are also talking about an important event, the start of a new show on Lakeshore Public Television. I guess we're going to have to work at the discovering the key issues part. That will not be difficult with this guest. Let's welcome Gerard McClendon, the newest member of our Lakeshore Public Media family and the host of Counterpoint. So look at you, Gerard, you know, you're like here on the show, you're, you're better dressed, you're no. like better looking. No. You know, you got a better tan than I've got. Hey. But I'm beating you on the hair. Hey, yes you are. You're definitely beating me on the hair. You know, my uncle used to say, when you're ugly like me, you have to wear good clothes. So that's what I'm doing. I just try to wear good clothes so, all so the you're time. So you're trying to, try, trying to spiff it up a little you bit? You have to compensate. Well, that's, that's good. <laughs> it's good to be here, Keith. Well, I'm really pleased. Uh, we thought it was really a good idea at the station to give people a chance to kind of get to know you a little bit more personally. because. You'll, I know you'll reveal yourself on the show as yeah. it goes along, but mm -hmm. maybe we'd spend a little bit of time kind of talking about who Gerard McClendon really is. So, yeah. so f first of all, how, how did this show kind of come to happen for you? Yeah, you know, uh, kind of a mystical way, actually. Uh, of course, I've done television in Northwest Indiana as well as in Chicago. Uh, started right here in Northwest Indiana. We were doing some shows at Comcast called The Big Picture in the late 90s. Uh, and then uh, as, as my, media, my social media presence started to increase on YouTube, um, I got the call from Channel 11, WTTW, and started doing commentary for Chicago Tonight. Uh, How long did you do that? I did that for two years. Okay. This is like 2004 four or five to 2007. It's hard to keep track of all that time. It, it really <laughs> is, it really is, you know, and I'm getting old here. And uh, after that, uh, that's when I got the call up to CLTV WGN to do a, a daily show on uh, news events, editorial and uh, uh, newsmakers and commentators. Did you love uh, doing that? Oh, amazing. It just to, to work in the WGN newsroom was just a pleasure. And uh, we had a good, good time there, did over 500 shows. Uh, at CLTV. Wow. So what was the best show you ever did there? Oh man, I, I would probably say uh, the show when we had the Harlem Globetrotters on was a good show. Uh, did they we, teach you to spin the yeah, ball they your did. finger? Yeah, they did. They taught me how to do that, which was pretty intense. I pretty much just had to keep my finger steady. <laughs> and know, they spun it for you? They spun it for me. <laughs> you know, that was uh, Curly Neal came to the studio, wow. studio and so it was, it was quite fascinating, along with several other uh, newsmakers uh, that have been on the show. Sherry Shepard came on the show uh, one day, which was just an amazing uh, event, along with several people around the Chicago area. Uh, Pam Greer, uh, the black exploitation oh, yeah. movie That's right. queen, uh, came on my show uh, one day, which was interesting. We were all pleasantly distracted the whole day <laughs> because Pam Greer was in our presence. But just some wonderful shows at CLTV, WGN, and, uh, and then we moved on to uh, do the show at WYCC off 63rd, uh, for which we won the Emmy. Uh, Emmy Award uh, for a show called The Challenge of Raising African American Boys. And so. Now, I knew you were going to drop that about the Emmy, see, because, you know, that, yeah. I'd be proud of that too. So, what I did for my show is see, check out the shelf. Yeah. I borrowed an award to put on there. It's not even mine, but I just wanted to make sure that yeah. I had something. It works. See, the key, <laughs> see, here's the key you fake it till you make it, and the key is to always. Make sure people can see your accolades, you That's know, right. because th those things are important. You know, the, the accomplishments that we have in life are important. They fuel and they drive us toward the future and toward the things that we're going to do in a better way. And so, and so that's, that's the beauty of, uh, of accomplishment and it's the beauty of persistence. And so with me, I believe that television is a medium that affects everyone and it's just a pleasure being here at Lakeshore public media and Lakeshore Public Television because this is where the real work can take place. Public television, unadulterated, uh, unfiltered, yet responsible. And that's the work that you do and that's the work that everyone else here at Lakeshore does. Well, you and I are big fans of that. So, so where does your Emmy sit? Where it's, does it reside? It sits in the living room on the mantle next to the TV and uh, we have to dust it off occasionally. But, but it's, um, it's humbling though. It's humbling to win an award like that when you're uh, chosen by your peers. Um, I think it's very cool. My, uh, 
my nephew works in, in Hollywood, and his first <laughs> internship there was working for some Emmy Award winning set designers. Yeah. And he said, I remember walking in their place and kind of, he said they were sitting on the mantle. Yeah. And he said, I walked in, he said, I saw all these Emmys sitting yeah. there. And yeah. he said, the guys turned around and said, well, that's Emmy Lou and that's Emmy Sue. And he said they had named them all. <laughs> Got to name them. So, yeah. so you're going to have to name your first one. There we go. And see what follows after that. I haven't named it yet. I, thank you for mentioning that, Key. I appreciate it. I'm going to give it a name. So, so there you go. Yeah. So in the same light, this is your fourth station now, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in all these years, can you, can, you show, can you share that moment when you're like, oh my gosh, this show is falling apart, or what was I thinking when I put this show together? Yeah. You have one of those moments? Not really, because television is like, doing television, and you would know this, Keith, is like being on the high wire. It, it's anything can happen at any moment, whether the show is live or whether it's taped. Uh, whether it's pre-recorded, whether it's a show that's only going to air on the internet or television a week later or the day of, you're always on the high wire and you have to embrace that. We make mistakes, sometimes we're off script, sometimes we wore the wrong outfit, doesn't matter. The key is to do the work. You know, Ian Van Zant talks about that. Uh, Les Brown talks about that. Uh, uh, the great Oprah Winfrey uh, talk, talk about doing the work. That's more important than anything else. It's more important than your successes and it's more important than the mistakes. Well, let's go back to when you first get, because I, I love this, one of the things about public television is trying to be that educational mm -hmm. side, you know, and I know that the grandparents and the parents and the, and the young people yeah. look at this and they go, how'd you get into that career? How did that happen for you? How did it happen that you did your first show, yeah. you know, went way back? in the 90s, right? So what, how was that, that opportunity, did it, how did it come to you? My brother and I saw a void, uh, uh, Theodore McClendon. We, we saw that there was something missing on television. We didn't necessarily know what it was, but we said, wait a minute, let's create something that we think is missing from television. You know, um, you know average person watches countless number of hours of television. What's sad is when you turn a television on and you have to actually search for something good to watch. That's sad. When, when, there's, when there's hundreds of stations. When there, right, hundreds of stations, I don't know what to watch. And it's not that people aren't good producers or good creators as much as many times people are trying to duplicate something else that was successful. And whenever you do that, there's going to be something missing. So you have to try to create something that's a little cutting edge. So did you create your own show? Yeah, we created a show called The Big Picture on Comcast. Uh, my brother and I created that show. And it this was, wasn't like Wayne and Garth or anything no, like no, that, no. right? This wasn't like... <laughs> Party on or anything? No, 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 no. It was uh, it was news, views, controversial commentary of the issues of the day, and we talked about things that we didn't see on traditional television. You know, whether it was something to do with uh, 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 reason, not just talk about low test scores, but what are the reasons why children in certain communities have such low test scores? What are the reasons for extreme high poverty in certain neighborhoods? Let's not just talk about the statistic, let's talk about what's behind the statistic. So you know? I think it's interesting, your motivation wasn't, I want to see my face on TV. It no. was like you had a message or a void you wanted to fill, and you said, I want to do something that gives something back to the community. So you're speaking the public television language, yeah. right? Yeah. You, you, you kind of drank that Kool-Aid. Yeah, evidently. yeah, I drank the Kool-Aid, definitely. And, and I think that drinking the Kool-Aid worked. There's a little vanity in anyone that does radio, TV, if you do an internet show, uh, if you do anything on social media, there's always a vain aspect, but you have to make sure that the information trumps the vanity. There's someone watching your television program, listening to your radio show. There's someone looking at your internet stream or looking at your social media, and they are, they are consuming that content as if it were the word of God. And so you have to be very responsible in what you put on the airwaves because the key is to give a good word, to give a factual word, to so, give a word that's edifying to someone so you can better their lives. That, that's, that's the whole point. This is a very responsible medium. So it's like that, 
everybody says, oh, if I heard it on the internet, right, it's got to be true. But yeah. you're saying, hey, if it's on TV, you've got that same kind yeah. of, in fact, it's a joke on the yeah. internet, we yeah. know. But yeah. on TV, you're probably right. People are still listening to it and going, that probably is true if I'm yeah. listening to it on TV and watching it. Yeah, I'm, I'm watching Keith Kirkpatrick's show. I'm watching Gerard's show. I'm counting on them to give me adequate information that's going to benefit my life tomorrow. If it doesn't, if they lie to me, if they, you know, kind of sandpaper the truth, that's problematic. And their life may be directly or indirectly affected by what we put on the air. So that responsibility, it's a high calling. It's not just something that we do. This is a, this is a calling. You know, this is something that's very, very serious. And if we can't take it seriously, then we shouldn't be doing it. I, that's excellent insights. So let's help the audience know a little bit more, our viewers know a little bit more about you. Let's go back, since you've already admitted you're kind of old, which I, you know, oh, yeah. I, I got you beat, but whatever. So let's go back to Little Gerard, yeah. okay? So you're from this region, right? Yeah. I mean, you were yeah. born and raised here, right? Yeah. yeah. Did, you have a, did you have a nickname when you were little? Goose. Goose. That's my nickname. Really? Yeah. My, what, that my, was the nickname I gave my daughter. It's a great nickname. Yeah. It's a great, every time I see Canadian geese flying or it just, it's that, those are, that's my brotherhood. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my dad gave me that name um, seven, eight years old, I guess, you know, I was playing little league baseball and he used to sing this little song to me. I'm not going to sing it on the air here, <laughs> but, uh, you know, just had a strong affinity, you know, my dad and mom for, for, for their three there are three boys, but you know. Uh, are, you, are you the oldest? I'm the youngest. You're I'm, the youngest. I'm okay. the baby. Dwayne's the oldest. He lives in uh, Mesa, Arizona. Uh, he's a real estate appraiser, and he also plays in a band in uh, in Mesa, Arizona. And then Theodore is uh, my other brother, who's an artist, and he lives here in Northwest Indiana. So I don't know if Theo's going to kill me thinking that you were older or younger. I'm not sure which. So, but I'll hear from him we'll later see, about it. We'll see. It's interesting because we're all in. We're all within the same decade now. And so whenever we are all in the same decade, we take this, we take this team picture, the three of us, and, uh, and it's always a lot of fun to uh, hook up with them. We don't see Dwayne as much because he's in Mesa, but uh, it's, uh, it's been a blessing to be the, the baby of a family of two uh, responsible and amazing role models in my brothers. I'm telling you, those, those guys have, have truly taught me how to be a man. Well. I did not know your parents, but I've heard great things about your yeah. parents, and you've always got to look at the reflection of the, the kids that come and say, yeah. hmm, there was some good parents behind oh, those, definitely. those people. But you had a, a pretty defining moment in your life. You lost your parents in a very tragic experience, and I know that really shaped another phase of your life. I yeah. mean, can you talk a little bit about yeah. that, what happened, and how it really impacted you? Yeah, you know, um, it was horrible. You know, it was, a, it was an experience that to this day is baffling to all of us. You know, uh, I was doing the show, uh, Gerard McClendon Live at CLTV back in 2009, and uh, my wife calls the WGN newsroom, you know, and she's like, you gotta come home right now, you know, and she knows, of course, everyone knows I'm a workaholic. I'm like, come home for what? You know, no, you gotta just leave the station, come home right now. And so I said, no, what are, what are you talking about? And so she says, give the, telephone to your producer, you know, Jerry Riles. So my wife gives Jerry Riles the, the news, you know, of what had happened. And then Jerry Riles says, Gerard, you need to walk out to the uh, parking lot with me. I had no idea what they were talking about. But you knew something was up. Yeah, and we knew in the newsroom that there was a, uh, an elderly couple missing for like a day and a half or two. But we didn't, no one knew, you know, their, their names weren't mentioned. So the, in the WGN newsroom, they were very, very sensitive that day because they didn't tell me either. I think they wanted my producer to tell me in the So they knew line. already. Yeah, you know, and they're in a the newsroom, wow. so they definitely knew. But the newsroom was, was very quiet that day, and newsrooms are usually loud, especially as you get closer to airtime. And so go out in the parking lot and... My uh, producer, Jerry Riles, he, he says, uh, Gerard, man, that, that, that couple that was uh, found dead in the forest preserve uh, were your parents, you know. And just, I mean, your you talk about your heart dropping, just, I didn't know who I was at that moment, you know. Face flushed, uh, hard to even take the next breath, you know, um, just inconceivable. 
So how has that changed who you are at going through that experience? How has that changed who you are? I think it has enhanced certain aspects of my character, Keith. So when my producer, Jerry Ryle, says, man, I got to drive you home or I got to drive you to your parents' house so we can get this thing figured out, I say, no, Jerry. I said, I got to drive you, follow me. I, I have to be doing something while, you know, trying to process this. And that would be ser terrible oh. sitting in the car. I, right. I could, that'd be me too. So we leave WGN studio, Bradley Place in Chicago. We head towards my parents' house in Hammond, Indiana. Uh, Jerry's driving behind me. 5.30 in the afternoon, Keith, there was no traffic on the Dan Ryan. Now, now, tell me how strange, that, how peculiar, how bizarre is that? 5.30 in the afternoon on the Kennedy Expressway and on the Dan Ryan Expressway, there's two or three cars in front of Jerry and myself, two or three cars behind us. There's no traffic at 5.30, the height of rush hour Somebody in Chicago. Somebody was parting the waters for you. Yeah, and there wasn't a holiday either. There was right. no holiday. So we're, we're on the Dan Ryan Expressway, and sun comes out at, U.S. Cellular Field where the Sox play. And right then it hit me. Gerard, you get to your parents' house, you're gonna see a crime scene, you're gonna see police tape, you're gonna see your friends crying there, you're, you're going to, uh, you're going to uh, see news, news crews there. Get it together, Gerard. This is what I'm thinking while I'm driving. Mm -hmm. The sun comes out right at U.S. Cellular and something comes over me and says, you got to forgive the perpetrators. Wow. That's we didn't even know who they were at the time. Right. We, we had no idea who had done it. You have to forgive the per You have to go on air and forgive the people who killed your parents. And so that's, 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 that was my commandment from God. That's what I had to do. And so it, it was, once we get to my parents' house, that's exactly what we saw. We saw police tape. The FBI was there. Cook County was there. Hammond Police Department was there. Uh, you know, sheriff's department, everyone was there, friends, family, just grief, just the whole field street was just grief stricken in Hammond. And uh, I didn't give a statement that night, but um, uh, eventually, uh, uh, later on that evening, you know, I, I said, I forgive the perpetrator. I have no idea who the, these people are who, who, uh, who killed my parents, but you gotta let it, you gotta let it go. You gotta forgive them. That's a, I, I was, I followed what was kind of going on through the newspapers and through people, mm -hmm. you know, who knew you and, and I was so impressed with how you were handling that. And I thought, God, it's got to be really yeah. tough to do no matter what. Oh, it's devastating. You know, um, um, funeral was a week later and right before the funeral is when they, um, uh, got two people in custody, you know, and. Then the story gets even sadder because the two people that were in custody eventually charged uh, with the murder of my parents were uh, 17 and 18 year old black males. Well, what's interesting is that that's kind of that real serious side, you know, of you and that mm -hmm. impact. But I also know, I mean, you teach, you mm -hmm. write, you're pretty darn funny most mm -hmm. of the time. Mm -hmm. So why all these things in your life? What? What are you trying to accomplish here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with all these things you're doing? So this is what I teach my students. Uh, you know, I always teach my students that your job here on earth is to figure out how you affect and can change civilization. Now, that sounds like a monumental task, but we all can do it in a very large way or a very small one. If you're a caregiver, and you take care of a family member or a friend or if you do it for a living, that's helping civilization. If you write plays or if you're an attorney or a medical doctor or a television producer or host, that's affecting change. That's changing civilization for the better. So no matter what you do in your occupation, your career, you have to figure out what it is you're here to do. You it's know, kind of you, like that. You know, you, you, you were, you, God had the presence to allow you to be born. What greater gift is that? So, so thank you for the gift, but now I'm going to give the gift back. I'm going to put something on this earth that will be lasting. And as Socrates said, always do things that are good. 
So it's kind of <laughs> like it's kind of like that concept of if if it's just your job to yeah. put one brick in the sidewalk, one brick in the yeah. sidewalk. Million, thousands of people could walk over that brick in a, in a lifetime. Yeah. But if it wasn't there, somebody's going to sprain their ankle. Yeah. Somebody's going to fall in that hole. That brick made a difference. Yes. And just doing that one thing. Doesn't matter how. So, it's see, hard to get that message across, don't you think, sometimes? It's very hard. So you have to keep drilling it. You have to keep saying, look, look, man, do, you have to always do things that are good. You know, uh, uh, what does Google say? Do no evil. You know, don't be evil. Right. You know, that we're always chipping away at what is the good in society that we can contribute. Well, we're, we're down to a couple minutes, so I want to give people a little bit of preview. So tell us a little bit what people are going to see on your show over the next few months. Just if they tune in, if they stay th on this station yeah. after the show's over, yeah. which they should do, what are they going to see in here besides this this face. Yeah, 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 yeah. With good clothes on, right? <laughs> Counterpoint with Gerard McClendon. We're focusing on um, uh, newsmakers, uh, views, controversial commentary, of course, on the issues of the day, but we're trying to enlighten. We're trying to enlighten by giving people more than two opinions on the show. We're trying to give people four, five, six different opinions so they can decipher what it is that they should be thinking and to diversify their own points of view. Sometimes we get stuck in a rut. How do we get stuck in the rut? We get stuck in the rut by having family beliefs, ethnic beliefs, racial beliefs, socioeconomic beliefs that we've known since childhood. This show will try to expose some of those beliefs so that the audience can look at their beliefs, challenge them, and then come up with better beliefs. So it's always going to be entertaining too, right? Oh, most definitely. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna fire it up. I I, <laughs> I know the first show you talked about already is pretty pretty darn exciting. So we'll be tuned in to watch that. I, I, I'm really thrilled about this possibility because we've talked about maybe doing you know some things together, yeah. some things that kind of feed into each other's shows. Yeah. And I think the residents of this region, yeah. the residents of Indiana and the yeah. Chicago land, yeah. are going to really get. They're going to get an hour now and instead of the half hour of this. Right, so. right. That's, and that's the, once again, that is the public television charge. We're charged to do that civilization building work. And what better place to do it than Lakeshore Public Media? Well, I'm ready to lay my brick with your brick. Yes. So the two of us are going to help build civilization together. That's what we're going to do it. Okay. Yes, sir. I'll be looking forward to it. Gerard. Thank you. Thank Thanks you, Keith. Thanks for Keith. being here. Okay. <laughs>